Hello guys, Skypoint here, and I am back with a video on Malkador the Sigilite. Now, Malkador the Sigilite is actually my favorite warlord these days. I play others, but there's just nobody who brings me more joy than Malkador. His games are very interesting. He has so many different win conditions, and just like the Alpha Legion, you kind of get the satisfaction of watching your enemy just lose control of the match right before he gets defeated. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk through my Malkador deck and why it works, and then we're going to take a look at three of my most recent and favorite matches. Alright, so Malkador himself. Uh, well, first of all, take a look over here. I've got around a 55% win rate with him, so he has been reliable in allowing me to climb my way up the rankings. He has low initiative, which is kind of bad, but he has a great reckoning to compensate for that. And then his ability over here, it's one of the very few zero cost abilities. And if you choose, uh, it lets you choose a card in the enemy hand. If it's the one the enemy plays in their turn, then you get to create a seal. And of course, then that plays well with his reckoning, which if we take a look at it down here, Starts at 14 energy and the cost goes down when you play a seal. I like to try to trigger his reckoning, so my entire deck is built around how do you reliably get seals out as often as you can. Alright, so let's take a look at my deck. 17 tactics, 13 troops, that's so a little bit tactic heavy. Uh, we're going to run through this from cheapest to most expensive. So we start with Command Bridge. Now, I will play Command Bridge usually at any point, but if it's one of my first cards in my hand, I will try to wait ideally until I have at least one seal, because this is the only card in the deck which will allow me to actually search and pull out a card. So I like to play this after a few seals have gone into my deck and a bunch of my tactics have already come out because it gives me a pretty high chance of being able to pull out the seal which I need to play in a particular turn. Void Engagement, um, this is there to basically help mill through my deck quickly so that I can get to those seals which I place in there pretty fast. And similarly on that note of milling through my deck, Licticio Divinatus helps me really get through that quickly. We also have Traitor's Demise, which helps me buy time and critically it draws a card. So again, it makes it more likely that I'll get the um, seals that I need out of there. And also a pair of classified assignments. So this is important for two reasons. It allows me to create a seal of my choice and add it to the deck. And it pulls a card out of my deck to make it more likely that I'll be able to get the seal. Occasionally, I'll be lucky enough to actually draw the very seal that I had created. So what you'll notice over here is the first nine cards in my deck, so almost a third of my deck, is cards which uh, will draw other cards. And there's more to come, we'll see that in a moment. So uh, that card draw is critical to allow this to work. We have M. Shen, which is basically one of the best wild card cards in the game, especially if you manage to play it in the first turn and turn it into the most powerful enemy unit in the second turn. Seek and Destroys are there just to make sure I don't lose board control. They also have great synergy with the next card, U uh, Uly Yo, God. Ulysidatum Taliman. I just call him Taliman. So, um... This works well with Seek and Destroy. It lets you, uh, for 5 energy, kill a unit which has 4 health. And critically now, you'll notice if the target dies, you draw a card. So this is now takes me to 11 cards in my deck which have draw effects. We're not done yet. Salon 11th Infantry. These guys are okay. Uh, but there you have a good home in this deck because of their backlash. Once these guys hit the board, it's another guaranteed card draw. So I have a pair of them here as well, so that is now up to 13 cards which have draws. We also have Errant Neophyte. So Errant Neophyte is an interesting guy. Um, it dies very, very easily. So most of the time when I'm playing it, I'm just putting it there to draw enemy attention and uh, trigger that backlash ability, which draws a troop from my deck, which is now, I think, my 
15th, this, uh, I've got two of these in my deck, so 15 cards in my deck. In other words, half of my deck draws other cards as a result. Errant Neophyte has great synergy later on with Sigilite's Chosen. I'll talk through that in a moment. Covert Operative, this is just very handy. Make sure you get board presence that sticks around until it's ready to be used. It has a great um, rally effect, so as long as it survives until the enemy plays a card, it can deal out a ton of damage to the enemy Warlord, and it also is a good card to set up for Sigilite's Chosen. Informant Network. This is my only, well, one of my two anti-stealth cards, and you might wonder why on earth do I only have two anti-stealth cards in this deck? Well, it's because I rely on the seals, so if I was to uh, go and look to the collection over here, I'm hoping that by the time enemy stealth becomes a real problem, I have some seals of the Sisterhood in my deck and available for me. So Informant Network is there. Alright, Sigilite's Chosen. This is one of the best cards in the game. This can make any of my troops into um, a real powerhouse. So even uh, the Salan 11th Infantry, once they get plus 3 health and attack, they become, in my potentially in my 4 energy turn or my 3rd turn, a 5 attack, 6 health unit with Backlash and Survivor 3. That's powerful. Errant Neophyte, he kind of sucks, but if he gets Sigilite's Chosen, he becomes extremely dangerous. 7 attack, 5 health, Survivor 3. Occasionally, if I know the enemy has a lot of anti-stealth or area damage cards, I might even play Sigilite's Chosen on Mashen to make it into a 5 attack, 5 health unit with Survivor 3. So it's a, such a good card, you can use it for, um, for any unit. Artillery Strike? Oh, you know what? That's anti-stealth here as well, I guess. Although mostly I use it for area damage, but it counts as anti-stealth. So, um, three anti-stealth cards, I guess, in my deck. Sword of Truth is great. Most of the time, I just use it for the flat five damage. It's a good finisher. Uh, but you can also use it if you weaken a really powerful enemy troop to uh, kill it and make your own copy of it as well. Broad Trifinger, he's one of my other seal generators. So Malkador creates seals, Classified Assignments create seals, and Broar create seals. Um, so again, it's such a good card. Three damage is respectable, and a lot of the times you will kill things by doing three damage, so you get to create a seal from it. Volcanic Instability is anti-stealth. And then lastly, Promius is one of those um, cards which can be a, w a win condition. If the enemy doesn't have a way of removing him, and I have lots of tactics in hand, he can become devastating, especially when combined with Sigilite's Chosen, which gives him huge buffs, plus three from Sigilite's Chosen, as well as plus one from Promius's own effect. And uh, he gets Survivor 3, so it becomes really hard to kill. And then, of course, there's Cerberus, the main man. Uh, great stats, value for the energy, but the fact that he just keeps coming back to life whenever you play a seal, and that this deck is designed to um, create and pull out seals, means that Cerberus can quickly become a nightmare for the enemy. Alright, so that's enough of the deck. Now let's take a look at it in action. Our first fight is against one of the trickier warlords. Ever since his balance pass, well, balance passes, Luther has become uh, very dangerous to face. Okay, so I actually was uh, going to stick around with these cards. I'm hoping between the two turns of card draw and Lecticio, I'll be able to get a two, a two or three cost troop, which will set me up for Sigilite's Chosen potentially. And Seek and Destroy can help me control those enemy troops popping out with um, Lycidas. Let's go. Fate shows us the so I have low initiative, so I am going second. So here we are. Uh, Lacticio Divinatus. He did nothing in his own turn. Alright, this is just about tolerable. I have Errant Neophyte. Um, I'm guessing he's going to play his three cost troop this turn, by the way. And there we go. Yep, sure enough. So Pax Imperialis goes into my deck. There's a seal. 
All right, we're gonna drop Eren to Neophyte and try to protect it with the counter attack. That will allow me to place Sigilite's Chosen onto it next turn. Jubak is most likely to come out next. Oh, it was not Jubak. He had Caliban's Knights. All right. So I'm getting overwhelmed with duplicitous troops here, but what I'm gonna do is play my Sigilite's Chosen and we'll use this guy to now quickly wipe out the Caliban Knight. That'll stop him easily spawning more troops. And I'm predicting he's gonna bring in his flanking troop to try and kill this guy. Yeah, there we go, that's one of his guys dead. Here comes the flanking troop. And he hits me, of course. So my guy dies and uh, because of, actually we both have the same backlash, so we each draw a card zaps me with his troop over there. Okay, that was expected. Now, I can actually take board control very easily here, so I'm going to bring in board Trifinger, blast that guy, and we're good. And there went another seal. Again, I'm betting on Jubak. See what comes up. Ooh, interesting. Very interesting. All right. So, uh, this is why I like Seek and Destroy. Oh, look at that, another Seek and Destroy. We can use that to destroy Jubak. And use Broar to kill his legendary infantry. And let's drop Errant Neophyte. I need to hunt through my deck to try and start pulling out seals. Ah, there's a seal. Pax Imperialis. Reduce the uh, return a troop to hand. So... Let's take a look. Ooh, that is a board clear in action right now. Oh, hey, there's Bashen, though. Yep, fair enough. The Enter my seven energy turn. We can you seek and destroy to blast the vehicle. We can bring in Bashen right now. And I'm guessing he's gonna bring in something and buff it up. Eight energy turn. Is this Caliban's heart? Go. Ooh, he's revealing my troop. I should have seen that one coming. Oh, raising the banner. I thought he'd use his Sigilite's Chosen on that guy to make him really buff. Okay, well that's fine. Uh, we can now bring in Cerberus. Now I've got to watch out because if he transforms his Luther, he might steal my Cerberus permanently and stop me from getting him. Ooh, loads and loads of Caliban's Jaegers. I think by this point he must surely have enough um, troops to be able to... Well, he, no, he's put in play enough duplicitous troops to trigger his ability. So let's do this. We're going to get Cerberus off the board. We can use an artillery strike to try and control... Yeah, a bunch of these guys. I would have been happier if I killed three of them, but whatever. Void engagement. Come on, pull me out of troop. Okay, good. Covert operative. Great. And I think he'll play Caliban's heart or strategic... Uh, I think I picked Caliban's heart there. Command bridge? Oh, that informant network will be very nice. I can do a lot of kills with that thing. Another one of those. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. See, every time um, Praetor Castile's ability triggers, his reckoning cost is going down. So by this point, I think his reckoning must be free. Okay, there we are. Okay, so it looks like I bet on the buffing card being played instead. Alright, let's do this. Sigilite's chosen. Go. Pax Imperialis to return the buffed troop. And here comes Cerberus. Alright, Brand of Fire. So, I think he is definitely going to steal my Cerberus this turn. I probably should have used my guy to hit one of his instead. That would have stopped the Cerberus being stolen. But now he's about to transform... Oh, he's playing Caliban's heart too. Nice. 
Arch Betrayer, there we go. From now on, Calipan is a free world once more. And he creates one space on his board. And he steals my Cerberus. Thank you very much, buddy. But he doesn't have the firepower needed to kill my guys. Just popped open the survivor. Alright, a seal of the administrator. Next trooper tactic costs zero. Okay, we can just start clearing out his board a little. Here's an uh that and now what I'm just gonna do over here is play informant network to wipe out his board. That seal, I mean, I had lots of energy left over. The main reason I played that seal was to lower the cost of my reckoning. Probably could have done it next turn. I just didn't know what else would be coming. Oh, nice. Seal of Unification. That one will be handy for sure. So this turn, he's just playing Praetor Castile and really buffing him. What? see over here. I think he's going to play... Well, we'll take a look what he's going to play. I've got a generous health lead, so I will just accept uh, transforming and taking the 9 points of damage. Here comes Pride of Caliban, so this will be potentially painful. Good thing I've got all that um, health lead over him, which is mostly evaporating now. <coughs> More troops. Now this is also a problem. Promius can be easily stolen too. All right. Aha! Seal of the Sisterhood. Perfect. So let's do this. We're going to play Seal of the Sisterhood that wipes his board, mostly. Praetor Castile is still around, but at least he will be jammed, so he won't generate more troops anymore. Play Traitor's Demise now to draw another card out of my deck, which is Void Engagement. We can play Void Engagement. And I get a classified assignment. See, I now have a funny situation where I don't want to play any more troops because Luther will just steal them. So I'm going to have to rely on my seals in order to win. I have a pretty good lead over him on health, so I feel decent about that. More troops. Oh, look at that demon. All right, so that demon has to go. So let's first of all use Seal of the Sisterhood to jam its ability. And then we can use Secret of Unification to steal that demon. And throw it straight into him, where, because he triggered his Reckoning, he now does three damage, which is enough to kill the demon. And in case he plays another powerful troop, Secret of Unification will steal it again next Don't turn. Don't you have somewhere else to be? So once you transform Malkador, he's got some really pithy chat lines, which I enjoy. <laughs> so, uh, let's take a look here. Alright, more duplicitous troops hitting the board. A full board of duplicity. Okay, let's go ahead and create a seal. And of course, I get Seal of the Sisterhood, which allows me to wipe his board again. Joy, buddy. And that is it. If I can get the seal next I turn that does 7 damage, I will win. Ago. Okay, there's a Caliban's heart. Lots of damage coming onto me there. I'm glad I did not try to play Promius last turn because he would have been able to use Caliban's heart to uh, damage and then steal him. Although, that would have been a trick, because I could have used Secret of Unification to take him back. Interesting. Alright, uh, oh man, I do not get what I need over here. Instead, I've got just like three Secrets of Unifications. Okay, let's use one of them over here. Steal one. And throw it into him. We'll go and steal another one. There we go. And throw that into him. Maybe I should have thrown them into each other. That might have been better. Oh well. Ooh, look at that. 
damage. And what else does he have here? Strategic mastery. Nice. Oh, this is a dangerous situation. No, he'll be able to do 12 damage to me only. And then I can use Secret of Unification to steal his guy and kill him. Oh, perfect. That's it. So, he did something a little unexpected at the end, but it was too little too late. I've already won this match. Let's take a look at what comes up. So, I can I'm now... almost insulted. Do Secret of Unification, grab his most powerful troop, and throw that into him, and it's oh. game over. So this was a really interesting one. I, uh, what, as soon as he triggered his Reckoning, I just stopped playing any troops altogether. Triggered my Reckoning as soon as I could after that, and then I was um, just trying to pull out the seals I need, create and, and pull out the seals which I needed in order to win the match. Next, a battle against Corvax. So this shows me, this will show more how this deck does against stealth heavy builds. So let's take a look over here. Again, not a bad set of cards to start with. I've got loads of card draw for turn one, and hopefully that will set me up well for following turns. Seek and Destroy is always good to have against the Raven Guard because of that annoying uh, vehicle they have with four attack, two health, sneak attack, and flank. Let's go. Fate shows us the path. No mercy! So he's just going ahead using his ability to ping me for a point of damage. Alaman is always handy, so let's pull out Void Engagement first. Pulled out a troop, not a tactic, unfortunately. Here goes Lecticio, which grabs two tactics. If I'd done that the other way around, I would have had the same net effect, but with two points of damage to him instead. It looks like he doesn't have the cards in hand that he wants. Alright, so I'm going to go and pull out the Salan 11th Infantry. You can see already with all the card draw, I've got a healthier hand than he does. So I've got seven cards at the end of my turn. And I've got more coming because this guy's going to do a backlash in a moment. Alright, uh, next turn we'll bring out the Errant Neophyte. And I'm going to just sit on this for now, I think. Yep. I think he's going to bring out Gorilla Strike to destroy everything. No, he's got Curse of the Raven. Oh, and he's going to use his Warlord ability. Okay, that's fine. Not going to be attacking him right now anyway. Yeah, there we go. With all of that, though, I'm up to nine cards at the end of his turn. And at the beginning of my turn, I draw one more. Ten cards. All right, let's do this. We're going to bring in Promius. He already has precognition, so he's sort of safe-ish. See what he does himself. Okay, he's bringing in troops. A vehicle with fast. Which goes and hits me. Alright. Okay, so, bring in Broad Trifinger. Broad can kill the unit with 3 health, that's great. Use Promius now to kill the vehicle. So I have board control. Use Counter Attack to protect Promius again, and also um, give him more health and attack. Let's use Lecticio to keep drawing cards. And it's a tactic, so Promius goes back up to 6 health, and he now has 6 attack. It's going well for me, although I'm six points behind on health, but I'm he's sort of left constantly reacting to me, which is what I want him to be doing. Curse of the Raven. He attacks me. Alright. And he has a ten point lead over me. Okay, let's drop Mashen. Use classified assignment to keep buffing uh Chromius over there. Nice. Damage the enemy. Bring in Void Engagement to draw myself another card. Oh, nice. Classified Assignment. I can now play that Classified Assignment. Perfect. Seal of the Sisterhood is the best one by far. 
Bromius is doing a ton of damage. And now, unfortunately, I can see Cadis next is in his hand already. I would have preferred it to be in this deck because that way Mishan could have transformed into him. But oh well. Oh, he's going to get protected over here. That's such a tragedy. Okay, at least Mishan survived over here. Let's see what I can turn her into. Destroy his vehicle, his guy over there first. Perfect. Now uh, let's trigger Mishan. No good options. Let's turn it into a speeder bike just because he'll be fo ha focused. He'll have to focus on taking that th thing down. And do what I can to hit him. And let's predict Cadus next will appear. Look at that, he's got the new legendary in his deck as well. Interesting. Oh, there's Cadus next. No, it's not Cadus. Whoops. What do I mean? That is Moradus squad, not Cadus next, obviously. Oh, Alright. Oh, I have not had enough coffee yet through this. Alright, let's bring in Taliman. And then I'm going to use Seek and Destroy to kill that troop. There's no easy way to, I think, set this up to use Talaman's ability to kill it. But the main reason I put Talaman in play is so I can drop that card on him. Again, I'm trying to make sure he keeps reacting to me as much as possible until I'm able to be in a position to pull out loads of seals. Oh god, look at all this. Alright. Hmm. Oh, Deliverance, ouch. Okay, I have to get that vehicle gone. So what I'm going to do over here is play Volcanic Instability. There we go. Very nice. And drop the Salan 11th. Now that he already has one troop there who gives Sentence, I think he'll bring more. I think the win condition he's looking for is getting Mordathan into play, dropping Cadus next the next turn, and using Mordathan to do some damage. Take a look. Okay, there's Mordathan. So I think next turn he really wants to play Cadus next. Alright, so what can I do here? Let's draw myself another card. Aha! Cerberus. Perfect. But again, he has to react to Cerberus. He won't be able to focus on his plan, I think. Now I need to find my anti-stealths. Oh yeah, that's what I expected to see. There's the vehicle. Ooh. His warlord is going stealthed again. It's well played. Very well played. Okay, I still don't have my anti-stealth card, so I'm going to play Traitor's Demise to... That up. Still nothing good. Okay, let's try and buy myself more time. Another Sigilite's chosen on Talaman. So again, just hoping he has to focus on taking out Talaman rather than trying to kill me. Nice. Oh! And his Warlord will cloak up again now. Yep. Yeah back into the shadows. That was... This guy's playing Korax almost perfectly. Oh, look at this. So much stealthing. Nice. Alright, let's see here. Ah, there it is. Informant Network at last. Okay, so everyone gets visible. Perfect. Secret of Unification on Mordathan. We can now throw Mordathan into the vehicle. That also brought Cerberus back to life. He used Traitor's Demise on his other troops to try and draw more cards. Oh, there's Command Bridge. Nice, okay. I should be able to pull out Seal of the Sisterhood. Exactly. So even if he plays another cloaked troop with Seal of the Sisterhood, I can now um, jam it, which will uncloak it. All right. Is that desperation I see? What's he bringing out? More Dathan, of course. Okay, yeah, that's it. Honestly, I, I, I have a win over here. I can use Cerberus and Sword of Truth now. Let's just go ahead and put him out of his misery. Five damage. And there's a comfortable win over Korax. Me left on 19 health. 
And lastly, from Korax to Korbax. So um, this is going to be a more interesting one. Against Korbax, you can never expect your own troops to really stick around. So um, I think this will be coming down to seals. Let's take a look at how this goes. Alrighty. Fate shows us the path. So, he goes ahead, does his early move, he's, he can be aggressive because he self-heals. I have no I units to play right this. now, so let's just go ahead and play Lecticio Divinatus. Good, that gets me my Salan 11th for next turn, and even better, it got me a Void Engagement, which I can play this turn as well. Oh nice, there's Michen. Hey, I don't think I had any choices for 3 cost units. So I'm hoping he just goes and attacks me again, nice, because what this means is I can drop Michelle onto the board right now. Oh, or not. Let's go ahead and put the Salan 11th there and see what comes up. I could have gone with Michelle, but I probably should have done that instead. Even if he poisons Michelle, when she transforms, she doesn't keep the poison. Alright, but this now looks like a job for Tallyman, I think. So attack that, that draws a card for me. Perfect. And now we can bring in Tallyman, which destroys that and draws another card. So I am on nine cards in hand and void engagement. Pulls out a tactic. Great. So I am comfortably ahead on health still. Let's see what he brings next. He's got a bunch of options actually, let's see. Stealth True. Nice. I don't have my anti-stealth yet, so what I'm going to do instead is bring in Errant, Neophyte, and Mashen. I think the Plague Ridden will come so you can start getting free troops, but we'll see. Yep, Fell Reaver, who gets? Blank. Ugh. And he's gonna go ahead and attack my troop there, of course. Which draws me a card at least, and he took gave him a ton of damage. Alright, so this is actually pretty good for me. Um, first of all, I'm choosing the hill. I can transform Mashen into um, Demon Chosen. Bring in Broar to wipe out his guy there. And try to predict which card he's going to play now. Alright, so how's he going to handle Demon Chosen? I can also give it Precognition to make it much more likely to survive. Oh, and that's a waste of, of uh, <laughs> Precognition. Just uses a tactic to kill it and copy it. So He now has two Demon Chosen available to him in his hand slash deck. Alright. So, what comes up next? So, this looks like a job for the Talaman, for sure. Well, it's your Promius, I guess. Talaman could have worked there, too. But what I can do here is drop Promius and create a seal. Take a little bit of a chance, but uh, destroy his troop. Alright. Even health. I've got four presents. He's got poisoned my super strong guy. Oh, nice. Seal of the Sisterhood. Perfect. Let's play that right now. Wipes his board. Buffs my guy. Play a covert operative, so I have some board presence. Go. And classified assignment to create myself another seal. Cool. Roar came up as well. Let's go ahead and do a ton of damage to Korbax there before my guy dies. Bye bye. Alright, he's on 12 health. Demon Chosen popped up, but I had predicted that, so he took a bit of damage. And this could start getting tense. I need to finish him off this turn, and fortunately, what I got what I needed. Duty. So let's just play that Secret of the Throne which I created last turn to win the match. Very comfortable. 
need 21 health left at the end. Alright, so just here's a quick recap of my deck, so hopefully now you see why it makes sense. So, I have a couple of abilities from Malkador and a few cards which will create seals, and around half my deck is basically dedicated to just going through my deck and pulling those seals out. So, um, what that means is this is actually a pretty nice workable Malkador deck. Work it actually allows seals to become reasonably reliable, and... Um, the one downside though is Alpha Legion trap decks will absolutely wreck me because I'm I, my whole game plan is about reducing the size of my deck and as Alpha Legion throw traps into there it just makes traps more and more and more likely to come up. I think I've only ever beaten one trap deck and that's because that guy had some bad luck. Apart from that, this is an almost guaranteed loss against Alpha Legion, but it is a strong performer against others, and I've even managed to beat many um, Angron decks with this one as well. Angron and other World Eaters as well. Alright, so um, what do you guys think? Is Malkador workable? Have you tried playing him? Have you given up on him because you just couldn't make him work? Try this deck out and share your thoughts. Alright, until we meet on the battlefield, bye for now everyone.